Yo, Elliot, I find I have a lot of trouble dealing with stupidity and or bad advice, worldviews around me, whether it's people texting and driving or just conversations about life. I seem to see it more and more as I grow and develop and remember thinking about it when I was young also. I have examined this thoroughly because I often think, well, maybe I'm the idiot, but it doesn't seem to be the case. <laughs> I feel like it frustrates me too much and I don't have an effective way of dealing with it. Do you have any advice on dealing with people's stupidity or even better, turning it to my advantage? Man, as as mundane as it may sound, the best thing to do is turn around. Pay them no mind. Uh, a lot of these people are brain dead, brain damaged. Uh, they've been deceived by Satan. And in many ways, there's nothing you can do. You can live as an example. You can hold strong to your ideals. You can even share your opinion if it's asked for. Right. I don't often share my opinion unless it's asked for. And I get a lot of questions and that's why everybody knows my damn opinion. But if nobody asks my opinion, I keep my mouth shut. And oftentimes I find myself around people that I just don't plain. I plain just don't agree with. Right. You say tr dealing with stupidity. Right. But in many ways, it's not even just it. It, it would be so innocuous if it was just stupidity. But I no longer think it's just stupidity. I think it's demonic attack. I think these people are under the influence of Satan. And Satan has a stronghold on them, on their minds and on their souls. And he's not going to let go. He's not a fan of allowing people to get free from his grip. That's why oftentimes some of the questions that you guys ask sound like this. Hey, Elliot, I'm starting to wake up and realize certain things and I'm taking new action in my life. But as soon as I start trying to do better, think better, be better, everything comes crashing down on me. Well, that's because it's it, it's a demonic attack. When Satan sees you trying to be better, he does every like a crab in a bucket. He's just going to grab your ass and pull you right back down here, right? If you allow him, if you allow Satan to pull you back down. And here's a crazy thing about those who, let's say, have crawled outside of the bucket. If you start looking back inside the bucket, right? Let's say you you know you're talking about people who are, who have bad advice, bad worldviews, things you don't agree with, and I I am in compliance with what you're saying because they're just wrong. There's certain people that are just straight up wrong. In fact, most people are wrong. You want to know how you know who's right and wrong? This is this is a litmus test for how to know if you're on the right side of history or the wrong side of history. If the majority of people are going a certain way. That's the wrong way. It's always the case. If everybody is saying ABC, 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 you have to go like this. Okay, let me check out this XYZ, XYZ. And everybody's saying, no, ABC. And there's more of them. There's more of them. And they're piling up. You got to say, wow, that's evidence that things are not right over there. Because people fall their, follow their fallen nature and Satan has a strong grip hold on this world right now. Right? You got to be leery, especially of mainstream narratives, mainstream ideals, where the mainstream mass monsters are taking their mindset. You got to be mindful. You got to be very careful. So back to this uh, crab in the bucket situation. Look, this is how you save yourself, dude. You get out, let's say you, you climbed out of the bucket and none of the crabs pulled you back down, right? That's Satan and his minions, which a lot of these people, I believe, they're, they're under the influence. So they are basically... Satan in flesh. Let's say you get out, right? You get out. Wow, man, my mind is free. I'm seeing things. I'm, I'm making different changes in my life. I'm moving forward and, and I'm walking in the grace of the Lord. And then you decide I'm outside. About, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back and look inside that bucket, right? Right. This is what you're doing. Essentially, you go back and look inside that bucket. You're 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 subjecting yourself to getting pulled right back in except this time it's going to be that much more insidious number one satan hates the fact that you left he hates that so he hates you even more the people that's already in the bucket that he already has influence over he's not even thinking about them right he hates all he hates everybody but he's not really actively working to keep them suppressed or in the bucket because they're happily in the fucking bucket they're happily in the bucket but you get out the bucket he goes I don't like that guy getting out of my bucket. And then you know what you do? You go and look back in the bucket. And you know what? When Satan's Satan in there and he sees you looking back in the bucket, he's like, gotcha. Because all you got to do is look in Satan's direction and he's got you. That's all you have to do. Because why? 
Look at how you're suffering right now. Look at, you said it yourself. I feel frustrated and I don't have an effective way with dealing with this. And I second guess myself and I think maybe I'm an idiot. Those are all the whisperings of Satan through his minions in this world. And you're only having that thought because you're looking at what they're doing. You're listening to what they're saying. You're putting your head back in the fucking bucket. Get out of the bucket and run. Stay as far away from the bucket as possible. And that may mean that you have to play ignorant when you're around people, right? I have some family members, not many, not many, not actually, not even my family. It's family in-laws, right? That I just have to pretend I don't hear when they're talking. We around, we in the same place, right? And they know that I don't agree. But as soon as the conversation turns to something where I'm done trying to convince people, let me just put it that way. I'm not trying to convince you. If you're ready and you have questions for me and you're open to a logical perspective on things, a spiritual perspective on things, an enlightened view of things, not the darkened mind of most people, well, hey, let's have a conversation. Let's talk. But if I hear you spew stupidity, I'm not going to try to correct you. No, no longer do I try to correct people when I hear them say stupid things. You know what I say when I hear them say stupid things? I go, huh, hmm. interesting. Is that so? Is that so? Hmm. Okay. Right? I had this happen. I met somebody in my neighborhood not too long ago, right? Earlier this week. I met somebody in my neighborhood this, earlier this week. Old guy. And, and a pretty prominent guy in the neighborhood. Introduced myself to him. We're talking a little bit. And, I, you know, I, I, was, I was going somewhere, so I didn't have too much time. And as I'm getting in my car, he almost puts on like a nefarious smile. Right? Like a little, you know, like it almost is like, I don't know, it's weird. It was a weird little smile. It was very subtle. And that's why it made me think of Satan. I was like, whoa, what just happened? It's almost like he, he morphed in a moment, right? And he goes to me, did you get your vaccine yet? <laughs> right? And I was just like, oh, no, not yet. That's what I said. Oh, no, not yet, right? Because I'm not trying to show my cards all the time. I'm not trying to convince anybody. But I said, no, not yet. What about you? And he says, that's right. I got my second one yesterday. And you ought to go get it. I'm telling you. Everybody's getting it. He starts telling me. So you got to go get it. And you know what I said to him? I said, hmm, okay. Wow. And he starts trying to like educate me, right? Like I play stupid, right? This is what I do when I'm around these people because I think the more you show your cards, the more you try to show your opinion, the more you try to show that you're clever or you're smart, the more you're playing their game. That's how they're trying to play the game. I don't play the game that way anymore. I play the game by saying, hmm, is that right? Is that so? Wow. Okay. Well, you have a nice day, sir. And I just go about, I just go about my way, right? You don't have to prove anything to anybody. You don't have to convince anybody of anything. But if they have questions, feel free, right? So all the problems you're dealing with, you said, do you have any advice on dealing with people's stupidity or even turning it to my advantage? People's stupidity is only prevalent or only obvious to you because you're engaging in people's stupidity. Don't listen. Don't look. Don't acknowledge. Pretend like they're already dead because most of them, like I said, they're already dead. They're brain dead. Their soul is dead. Their soul is already dead. So why argue with dead people? Why argue with zombies? Or maybe not so... Uh, Maybe not being so harsh, I could say it this way. They have the, the mind of a child. Do you argue with a four-year-old, right? Do you, argue, do you literally actually try to fight with and prove your point to a four-year-old? No, you recognize, oh, you're, such, you're cute. You're a kid. It's okay. You'll, you'll figure it out eventually. It's all right. It's all right, right? So that's it, man. You have trouble dealing with people's stupidity, but it's your stupidity for engaging with them. Turn your back, and Andrew Thomas makes a good point here. It says it reminds him of the verse about casting your pearls before swine, right? Jesus said, don't cast your pearls before swine, right? Don't, don't, don't try to convince the pigs that what you have is worthwhile because they're going to look at it, and they're going to sniff it, and they're going to be like, what the fuck is this? Get out of here, and they're going to get mad. They'll, they'll eat you. They'll eat you up. They're mad because you didn't give them slop and they want slop. They don't want these damn pearls, right? And they're mad because you're trying to give them something that, other than what they're used to. They'll be very upset with you. And so you need to just turn your, you need to just, another one from Jesus, right? Where he says, brush, 
Brush yourself off. Dust off your sandals. Dust off your sandals and keep going. Right? Isn't that one of that's his advice to his disciples when he says, Go and preach the kingdom of the Lord and, and teach people to repent. Repent and be baptized. And, you'll, and he says, but if you go to their house and uh, they don't accept you, they're not trying to hear what you have to say. He said, no worries. Dust off your sh shoes. Right? He says sandals. Dust off your sandals and get the hell out of there. Right? Go somewhere else. And that's what you need to do, bro. You need to go somewhere else. So that's it, bro. I hope that helps. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.